Yeah, hey, this is Alex from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. Uh, we have a very special guest out here from Pennsylvania, Thomas Wilford. Thank He's you. been a longtime customer of ours and a good friend. He usually comes out for Comic Con every year. Unfortunately, Comic Con was canceled. We're all very disappointed. Big bummed. sad face. But he had a few weeks and with nothing to do, so he's on a little uh, trip around the United States, and he's like, hey, well, now I'm gonna stop in and say hi to you guys, and I have my bike with me, which he's never brought out before, so we're really excited to actually see it. And uh, I'll let Robot step in, and kind of we'll go over all the amazing technical features of this uh, Fallout-themed Vespa. It's a 150 Super, 1974, I think, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. So. So yeah, so thank you again for coming out and uh, I'll get Robot in here and we're gonna go over this amazing uh, amazing machine. So, here we go. Hey everybody, it's Robot here and everybody knows I'm the scooter nerd. So I'm gonna talk about Thomas's bike and what's underneath the hood. Oh yeah, there's not really a hood on a Vespa. There's a cowl, but it's a 1970s Vespa 150 Super. And if you're not familiar with the vintage Vespas, um, this is kind of the lower end range for the large frame scooter. It originally had an eight inch wheel on it and they have this unique cast iron hub, which I think is really cool. I've always liked it because it's the only scooter that's had that, including some real funky P series that was never sold in, I don't know, sold in East Asia or something. Um, but he's got these adapter rims that adapt up to 10 inch. So it's kind of like a sprint. A Sprint's pretty much the next step up from the Super, where it has 10 inch wheels, uh, still just a basic two port motor. Then you go to Sprint Veloce, which has a three port motor, which is a whooping two more horsepower. Um, for the engine, the standard basic two, two port, but four speed motor wasn't really acceptable for Thomas, so he did some tasteful up upgrades to the motor. It's got the popular cylinder kit for the older two-port motors is made by Panasco. We sell it on our web shop, scooterwest.com. Um, a super cool kit. I've had the opportunity to have dinner with the engineer for that cylinder kit in Italy several years ago. Uh, we put one of those kits on a dyno and it doubles the horsepower of these old scooters. You know, I'm talking going from 5.5 horsepower to almost 11 horsepower. Pretty incredible just for a bolt-on part. Um, in addition to that, he's gotten rid of the basic points and otherwise pretty crappy electrical system that's found on these uh, US 70 scooters and converted it all to AC and it's got the SIP vape ignition system, which is a great ignition system. Um, and it's powered all these cool LED lights with the AC and it's gotten rid of the battery. Uh, in addition to that, he's got a pretty stock looking pipe on there is the road pipe. It's a great pipe. It's not as crazy as a full-blown expansion chamber, but definitely gives you a boost um, and has the classic look along with the little the popcorn kind of noise that uh, vintage Vespas make. So I'm going to hand it over to Thomas and he's going to talk about all the cool stuff that he's done to this scooter. And first of all, if you're kind of wondering what the theme is, um, I don't expect all of you to follow the video game scene, but the video game series Fallout, which is a huge video game series, has been out for several years, has always been kind of in inspired by steampunk and all that style, and a lot of the styling cues and all the custom stuff that Thomas has done is based on that video game, including this really cool badge, and he'll tell you the acronym of what that means. So I'm gonna hand it over to Thomas, and he's gonna, let you know what this thing's all about. Thank you, thanks a lot. Um, hi, I'm Thomas Williford, and you have no reason to know who I am, actually. Um, but uh, I bought this uh, Super 150, and it was this cool shade of blue, and a friend of mine works at Bethesda Games who produced Fallout, and he said, that is Fallout Blue. We gotta do something with this. And I was like, uh, okay, what's Fallout? And he introduced me to that video game, and now I have no life. All I do is play that game and work on this bike, 
Um, so we did a graphics, uh, we did these graphics, this is all vinyl. And to get this effect, see how it's got that scratched effect? I used a wire wheel, then I pushed airbrushed black paint and wiped off the excess. And it just chipped it up, it looked, it looked really cool. This here, I actually took a torch and burned it. So it looks like a laser hit there. Uh, it's been cleaned up because I just rebuilt this bike. Um, this piece here is actually 3D printed. It's the mask for a group called the Brotherhood of Steel. They have this power armor. And the idea is it filters air to go into the engine because the air is so you know, laden with dust and dirt in the Fallout universe that it wouldn't work. Um, uh, what else did I do? Oh, I added turn signals because I got tired of being run over. And that, that actually worked out great with the... Um, with that uh, vape system, I was like, this is so much better. I had the original system on there for a couple of years and I kept trying to stick with it. I never want to turn back. I, I'm, I, I just love the way it turned out. Um, let's see, these are actually from a real gas mask from the 50s. A friend of mine gave it to me. I even found yellow, uh, some yellow cables to go with the blue and yellow theme. Um, some of them are in places you just can't see, but I put blue, uh, yellow cables in anyway, because why not? Um, let's see, what else? Uh, back here, <clears throat> this oil can, I cleaned it out completely and actually has two-stroke, high-end two-stroke oil in it. And it's a can from the 1950s, and it's got this little snap-in bracket so I can get it out and back in easily um, to fill in here. I left the, I'll, I'll get a lot of you know, rubbish about this, but I left the oil injector in it because um, it's probably smarter than I am and will actually put oil in there and I will forget at some point. So, I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> and it's worked fine. I've never had a problem with it. I had the engine apart and I was tempted to take that out of there and I just decided to leave it in. Um, this didn't come in yellow. I could not find it in yellow. Um, little trick, if you take off-white and you put it in a coffee can filled with a yellow leather dye, it'll actually soak in and it'll come out yellow. And it's all dirty on purpose. That's to, The great thing about the Fallout theme is if I get a scratch on my bike, I do not care. It actually becomes part of it. Uh, back here, you'll see the jet exhaust to make it look like it had jet engines. These are also 3D printed. Uh, the great thing about 3D printed parts, I've got a part here which is the jet intake. They don't add any real weight to the bike. This thing weighs ounces and it, you know, we get some great detail. That's the back side. We could carve it out so it would fit great. This is, um, this is just some foam so when we bolt it on, it doesn't scratch up anything. Again, it weighs next to nothing. Uh, Cute trick here, uh, we airbrushed it. But this paint matches pretty good. I literally went to Lowe's and with the door over here, and I said, can you match this? And the guy at Lowe's also worked in automotive and said, sure we can. And we matched it up pretty darn well. Um, trying to think of what other cool things we did. The graphics were so much fun. I've had so many people actually ask me to make the graphics for their own bikes. How about the lights? The, oh, the, the lights, lights are super cool. So I love the lights. So these on. were these were some Jag lights that were you know not expensive. I got them online for about fifty bucks, and they came with a red lens and one really rubbish light holder. And I thought I can do something with that. Again, I wanted to put turn signals on. These are now brake and turn signal. Um, they come with a red lens. You can buy the yellow lens, and I cut it in half, and I glued them together and everything. And inside are two LEDs set up, and this is also set up with the running light and brake light. So when this brake light goes on, these top go on. So you get pr plenty of brake light. People know you're actually stopping, and the turn signals are pretty bright, too. Um, this here, you, you've seen this before, probably it's a little, um, when people are sitting side saddle, one of those it's supposed to be able to put your feet on there this is all leather in here and that's these all these things that are the, the leather and um, if I need gaskets I actually have an industrial cutting laser in my garage as you do um, and I laser cut and I laser etch and I make my own uh, stencils to get that effect there that goes back down like that um, now it doesn't do anything it's just when someone wants to pose on it they can put their foot there that's the only thing that does. I did also add a side stand 
for those times when I'm being too lazy to put it up on the center stand. This is kind of fun. This is an antique fire extinguisher that were used on Harley Davidson's and other bikes. And it came with the brackets. I got it for $10 at a flea market. And then I dumb me, dummy me, I said, I wonder if it works. And it still sprays, you know, uh, tetracarbons, which are highly cancerous or something, I'm sure. Um, and, but it looks really cool sitting there. It's, it looks like I'm ready to put out a fire. Um, and uh, as I put white, white walls because that 19, um, Fallout has a very 1950s, 60s aesthetic. Um, it's a post-apocalyptic world where they kept going with the whole nuclear thing where we kind of pulled away from it after World War II. They went with it. So that's why it's all fallout and desolate. And this thing looks great when I'm doing the wasteland type stuff and running around. That's, the tires are actually dirty on purpose. I don't clean them. I, I leave them a little greasy looking. Uh, but they're all, the tires still have the little nubs on them. I, I take very good care of them. Um, this backpack is one of my favorite little things that goes with the bike. And uh, Alex actually found this and gave it to me for Christmas one year. And I nearly cried. And I can't find any more of them. So it's like mine. You're not taking my backpack. My, uh, my laptop's in there where I design all this stuff on here. Um, we made stickers. My, uh, my friend Josh is now, who works at Bethesda, is now like, trying to get his wife to let him have a bike, and he's almost there. This, it, where it says Vault 150, um, we actually made that using the laser cutter and a piece of acrylic to get it to, to, you know, it's exactly the size of the original piece that was there. Um, in the Fallout world, Vespa stands for Vault Tech Explorer Single Passenger Auto Cycle. Vespa. Um, I love that. <laughs> was, I, I came up with a whole bunch of backstory and stuff because I, I kind of fell in love with it. And this is the bike that actually got me, um, and I blame, I blame this man here for working on Vespas because um, I pretty much watched every video he did. Even videos that had nothing to do with what I was doing because I would catch something. Hey, wait a minute, he did that thing on a modern bike, but that would work on an old bike. Um, I did a mistake once reassembling the engine. I said, oh, I've seen this video. I can, I can move ahead. And then I put the whole engine together and realized I missed something. Oh, it's in that part where I scrolled through. So I learned, watch the whole thing. Just sit there, watch it, eat your cookies, drink your milk, watch the video. Um, I think that's it. That's everything I've done to it. Uh, I, I literally rebuilt this bike, took everything apart, put it back together, all with uh, information I got from this gentleman here. And, uh, and it, surprisingly, it ran. That's the best part. I'm, I'm still shocked that it runs. So I love Thomas's style on the scooter, and that's a theme towards a video game series that also has a very steampunk in inspiration. Something I don't really see on other people's Vespas. I have seen, you know, plenty of mod bikes, plenty of the English, like engraved theme bikes. I see um, blacked out bikes for the modern ones. So, you know, it's been a lot of the rehashes of the same styles and I appreciate all those. But when you take it to the next level and do something completely different, I think that's where the creative, creativity is. Uh, I'm gonna hand it back over to Thomas. Uh, he's gonna start the scooter up. And the sad thing is it had a front piece and somebody stole it. And there, I'll show you. There was a plasma, um, <clears throat> A piece that looked a lot like this, it was called, we called it a plasma turret on the front so that it looked like it had a weapon mounted and it was so cool and somebody stole it at an event, a science fiction convention. And I said, well, uh, are you sure I didn't lose it somewhere? And they said, no, I saw some guy pick it up and walk off with it. I thought he was a friend of yours. And I was like, crap, I never saw it again. So and it's, uh, now I'm going to modify one of these, which makes a horrible noise. <laughs> And it's got these lights, so it's gonna be on there. So I press a button up here. It's the only thing that's gonna have a battery in it, <laughs> but it'll be self-contained. And I'm gonna uh, make a new, new piece for the front there. Um, now I'm gonna see, you know, now that I bragged that it started on the second kick last time, it's not gonna start, because um, it's gonna, you know, make me a liar. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I fail frequently, but I usually edit the failures out. Cool. <laughs> Oh, almost okay. there.
So you can see it sounds a little, a little peppier than a normal Super 150. And you got the lights all working. Oh yeah, there they are. Yeah. Yeah, and the turn signals. Thomas, how, how can we follow you? you like, um, do you have videos or are you on uh, Yes, Facebook I'm or? on, if you look up Thomas Williford, uh, W-I-L-L-E-F-O-R-D on YouTube, I have a YouTube channel that's just starting up. Got a couple videos on there, a couple how-tos. I actually did a how-to uh, just to start things up on how I did these, uh, these Jag lights. So it's all on there, how I set it up. Um, it's super simple and you know, if, if a trained monkey could do it. Um, also, if you just, you know, catch me on Facebook, Thomas Williford, there's only so many. The one who looks like me, that's the one. The other guy who's Thomas Williford, the bald guy that you see there, uh, that's not me. This is not a wig. Um, not yet, at least. Search Google for Fallout Vespa. Search, You'll search find Google a bunch for of stuff Fallout on Vespa, scooter, and you so. will find loads of pictures of my ex-girlfriend, other ex-girlfriend, and a lot of other people, and occasionally me, on this bike. Well, thanks for coming out, Thomas. I, I really you. appreciate having content that's just other than my how-to stuff and covering um, sometimes uh, some of the videos I do are just like I get a customer's bike that I think is cool, and then I'll just review it. Uh, but this is even better. Thomas came on his road trip and made a little stop by uh, Vespa Motorsport the show off his scooter. I've been seeing this scooter for uh, years now. There's been a, a print in our hallway. If you're ever at our shop, uh, unfortunately during this pandemic, we're kind of just open by appointment only. So it's not really open as of July, 2020. We're super busy. I thank all the customers that are supporting us. Um, and once again, I thank Thomas for coming out and showing something good. Hopefully I get back on track and start getting more YouTube videos pumped out. Um, until next time, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com and we'll see you next time.